In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a Sony camera that was purchased from Japan and meant for the Japanese domestic market and you can unlock the international languages on it so that you can access the menu options in English, Spanish, German or any of the other international languages. So if you've got a domestic Japanese Sony camera and you can't figure out how to get it into English, stick around in this video, I'll show you how. I ordered this Sony ZV-1 from Amazon Japan and uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this camera so I decided to get the um, very good used option at 59,800 yen uh, and let's see what that is in US dollars that works out to 440 US dollars 440 US dollars for Sony ZV-1 it's a pretty good price so a few days later, uh, the camera was delivered to me and I got it, here it is, and I have to say, this camera that I received and only paid 440 US dollars for, it is in mint condition. But there was a very big problem when I got this camera, one that I didn't actually know about until I got the camera in my hand. When I turned it on, the entire camera's language was in Japanese. And I thought, oh, okay, no problem. I'll be able to just go into the menus and access the language option and switch it into English. But as I went through the menu options, I discovered that there was no language option. This is a Sony camera meant for the domestic Japanese market. It only comes in Japanese. There is no uh, menu option for international languages. So that was a pretty big problem for me. So I started working on how maybe I could unlock it or change some firmware. It turned out that the solution was this software. So I came across this software called Sony PMCA-RE. Uh, I will put a link to this software in the description. And basically, these guys have reverse engineered the Sony digital camera. And depending on the model you have, uh, you can do all sorts of different tweaks to the Sony software in your camera. With this particular camera, the ZV-1 that I have, this is not one of the cameras that runs Android. There are some of the older Sony cameras that run Android and you could run something called uh, a tweak uh, and it would install an Android console, an Android app on the, on the camera. Um, for example, a very popular one for this was the Sony AX5000, which is actually the camera that I'm recording on now, where you could actually install this uh, Android software, uh, open tweaks into your camera, and then you could enable languages or do all sorts of things with that. The Sony ZV-1 doesn't have that option. So the only way you can try and maneuver around in here is to use this option called service mode. So. As I was reading through this software page um, on GitHub, I, I discovered that they had a Windows, Mac, and Linux version. And I actually was able to use the Windows version successfully with my Sony AX5000 to install the, the OpenTweak software. So I decided to continue using the Windows version um, for the, the Sony ZV-1. And uh, it was not as easy, I, I can tell you. This open memories tweak feature does not work with the Sony ZV-1. And so I decided to try this service mode, uh, which is this PMCA-Console service shell. And I, tried it, I, tried, I decided to try and use that with this other software uh, known as Zadig, uh, which basically installs this uh, US, LibUSB Win32 driver. Now, I don't know if uh, any of you have tried this. I I'm assuming that if you're watching this video that you are trying to convert or unlock the, the international languages on a similar camera to the Sony ZV-1. So I actually uh, came and I was following along with this one about the Sony ZV-E10, which is basically the big brother of this camera here. And I was encountering the same problems and that basically is um, that even when you could get this camera into the service mode, you would reach this uh, screen here and 
the camera actually has the languages installed. That's the thing. There are 35 languages installed in the software in the camera, but Sony has locked it and has disabled access to that international language menu option. So what you need to be able to do is come in here and select option two, unlock all languages. But that would not work. Any attempt to do that would produce this error here. Sensor adjust control error 129. Some people reported success with selecting option five first, which is unlock protected settings. That should then change protection enabled to protection disabled, at which point you can then go back to option two and unlock all the languages. But that did not work for me. The problem I would have, uh, which is similar to what some of the other people in this Sony ZV-E10 um, chat here had, is that even if they selected the unlock protected settings, the software would report success, but it actually did nothing. So you couldn't, you couldn't even do this unlock all languages. So I, I kept on trying and you know, you had to keep messing around with this, um, with this software, this Zadig software, which was a real pain. Um, you know, having to do some stuff on Windows sometimes is just a pain and having to mess around with this, I, I kept on trying. I, I wasn't able to get it uh, working at all. And uh, you had to come in and, and, and uh, some people were talking about this developer build, this developer uh, version, I, which I tried also that, you know, didn't make any difference for me. So what I ended up trying, and this actually worked for me, was to actually stop trying it on the Windows version and I actually went and tried it on the Linux version and that worked instantly. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video. So if you have been doing something similar, trying to get your ZV-1 or ZV-E10 unlocked and you have been encountering these similar types of problems um, where you're not able to unlock this protection enabled setting or you, you've had trouble with this Zadig driver, then forget about all that and just go for the Linux version. I even put a little post here. Uh, this is me over here I, I, in, I, that I've added to here. But I wanted to actually create a YouTube video about this because not everyone is going to come and see this little post here. But there's a higher chance somebody will come across this video and then this video can help them. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I did. And then I'm going to circle back uh, and just talk about Linux a bit in case you're a Windows user and you don't have a Linux computer. So what I've done here is I've connected the micro USB cable to my camera and you want to make sure that your camera is in mass storage mode. You don't want it to be in MTP mode. This should be USB mass storage like you see on the screen here. So like I said, I was able to get my camera uh, unlocked and get English enabled uh, by using the Linux version. So I'm just going to show you how uh, that works here. So as it's mentioned here on their webpage, you just have to clone this Git repository and then install a uh, requirements text and then after that run the, either the console version or the GUI version of this uh, application. So what that looks like, in, you know, in case you've not used Linux before, these are the commands you have to run. I will put a copy of these commands down in the description. Uh, you need to uh, have git installed on your computer and then you would do git clone and then you run this command which basically uh, downloads this software uh, from the github repository then you want to cd change directory into this folder which was created from this previous command then you want to pip install this requirements text and then that'll just go ahead and download all the requirements that the software needs uh, one of the things though that uh, I had to do is I had to run this additional command um, sudo apt install python3 tk that was missing from the requirements.txt and I could not get the program to run without running that so I ran this command and then after that I was able to then run this software so uh, again I'll put these down in the comments um, below the description uh, but let's go ahead and run this now now I've already got my camera um, connected and it's plugged in and it is in USB mass storage mode. 
And what happens when you run it is this is what uh, appears. This is very similar basically to the, that Windows version. And when you come over to tweaks, and you can just click on the start tweaking service mode. And the beautiful thing about doing it this way, you don't have to mess around with that Zagreb and all that other Windows nonsense. All of this is just native within Linux, so it just works. So you click on this start tweaking service mode, and there we are. Now you can see on my camera, this Sony ZV-1 that I got from Japan, I've already gone ahead and unlocked all the languages. That's why you see 35 out of 35 languages activated. When, um, when I first connected this, this was disabled. I I'm not going to disable it now because I got my camera working uh, perfectly fine. Thank you very much. So I'm not gonna, for the purposes of this video, uh, disable it. But what you will find if you run this is that this unlock all languages will be off and you will hear it see it says uh, one slash 35 languages activated. That's the, the one being Japanese. So all you need to do is just enable this and then hit apply and then boom, your camera will automatically and instantly activate all the other languages and then you'll be able to go into the camera's menu options and you'll be able to select whatever language uh, you need, uh, including English. So that's the beautiful way of doing it um, and the most simple way. And I'm kind of, um, as a Linux user, I'm kind of uh, upset at myself that I didn't try the Linux version first. I, for some reason, thought that the Windows version would be better supported and maybe have the most updated version. And since everyone else in the forum seemed to be using the Windows version, that's the one that I thought, okay, I'll go and give that one a try. But I should have tried this Linux version being a Linux user and uh, then it would have worked instantly. This one here, disable video recording limit. This should already be enabled on your ZV-1 or your ZV-E10. Um, all I did is just touch this one here and hit apply. So that's how you do it. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and just add on to this video in case you are not a Linux user, how can you run this software without installing Linux on your uh, computer? One more thing, this may also work on a Mac. Mac and Linux are very similar being Unix based um, operating systems. I'm not sure, your mileage may vary. So if you are a Mac user, you may want to just give the Mac version of this software a try uh, before you try this. Or if you have access to a Mac computer, you can give it a try. But if you don't, here's an easy way that you can run Linux. So you can go over to linuxmint.com and you can come here and you can click download. Uh, and then what happens is, is that you can come here and you can download an ISO file. An ISO file is basically an image file and what you can do then is you can burn that ISO file onto any USB drive. You will need, uh, I think, at least two, two gigabyte USB drive. And then what you can do is um, you can insert this USB drive into your computer and you can live boot off this USB drive and your computer will boot Linux Mint exactly as you see it here off a USB drive and then you will have Linux running without having installed it on your computer. If you don't know how to burn uh, an ISO file in Windows, you can use a software like Etcher. Again, I'll put this link down in the description. If you download Etcher, it's free. Uh, get the Etcher for Windows, download it, install it, download this um, ISO file from here, burn it to a USB drive. And then once you boot off of this drive, you will have a Linux environment in which you can open up a terminal. Terminal is what this is. You'll be able to open up this terminal. You, in the live environment, you will be able to install Git. You could type in sudo apt install Git and it will download Git uh, and install it in that live moment of the live, the live CD. 
then you'll be able to run those earlier commands that I showed you and it will then be able to download and then you'll be able to connect to your camera to your computer and then unlock the languages. And the nice thing about this live CD is that when you're done with it you can just come and go start and shut down and then you pull out this USB drive from your computer and then you're done with it and then when you restart your computer you'll be back in your Windows environment. This will not damage or install or even touch your hard drive so you can just temporarily for one boot run Linux off your uh, on your computer off a USB drive so that you can run this software. So that's how you can get it working. That's how I was able to get it working. And in case any of you have been struggling with getting this working and you know having to deal with all that Zagreb and all that other rubbish, do it this way, give it a try. If you have any questions or if you get stuck, uh, feel free to just maybe drop your questions in the comments below and I will try and answer them the best I can uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped and uh, Good luck.